Well, hello, and uh, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm just answering a quick question that I got from uh, from a student in an email. Uh, it involves an inequality uh, with fractions and where the de denominators include variables. So there's a little bit of a different step here that we need to take, um, but uh, it's it's really going to be similar to other other things we've done. So we'll just jump right in. So the exact question was this, to solve this inequality. <clears throat> now we would, we would love it, right, if we could just multiply both sides by x, right? And that would clearly give us, on the left side, 1 is less than or equal to x over 2. And then we multiply both sides by 2 to give us 2 is less than or equal to x. So that might even work, right? Let's let's check a couple things. If if x is three, then we get one third is less than or equal to one half. If x is four, we get one fourth is less than or equal to one half. So this this seems to check out, which is great. But it's only part of the story. You see, we inherently assumed something there. We assumed. By keeping this symbol, we assumed x was greater than 0. It's positive, right? But what if it's not? It's a variable to represent any real number. Now we see here, right away from the very beginning, we're dividing by x, right? We've got 1 over x, so I think it's OK to say x is not 0 from the beginning. But can we make claims like this from the very beginning that we're only dealing with positive numbers? I don't think we can make that claim. So while this first step here is entirely appropriate, it is only appropriate for the case where we have positive x's. So if x is positive, then this set will work. But what if it's negative? So case 2, x is something smaller than 0. Well then our inequality, right, like this, says what? It says that x We multiply by both side both sides by x and multiply both sides by 2 what do we have right we've got something different we've got 2 greater than or equal to x okay so we've, we've got something here, which is actually quite nice. We've flipped the directions. We get 2 is greater than or equal to x. What does this mean? Does this mean x is any real number? Right, so right here, we've got x is just smaller than or equal to 2. and and here we've said x is bigger than or equal to 2. If you put those two things together, apparently x can be anything, except 0 perhaps. Let's look a little more let's look a little more carefully here. In this first answer we were assuming that x was positive. Which positive numbers are thus allowed? is this set of positive numbers, which is exactly that set, right? Here we were assuming x is negative. Are all of these negative? No. So we have to look at the overlap here. Here's 0. Here's 2. x less than 0 is these numbers. x less than or equal to 2 is these numbers. 
We have to have both of these things being true because we're working in this case. So we are only going to select those numbers. Which makes sense. If we go back to the original problem, right? Picking any number bigger than 2 works because this, oh, I've got it wrong, don't I? Got it reversed. It works because this fraction is going to be smaller than 1 half. Right, if we pick a bigger denominator, we've got ourselves a smaller fraction. A negative number works because when you divide by a negative here, you get a negative fraction. Any negative fraction is smaller than any positive fraction. So there we have it. We had to divide this up into two cases, case one x is positive, case 2, x is negative. The first one gave us a non-contradictory answer. We picked those positive numbers which are bigger than or equal to 2, which is all of them. In the second case, we picked those negative numbers which are less than or equal to 2, which just so happens to be only the negative numbers. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope that that cleared up some problems, cleared up some confusion. Uh, but these types of problems, you know, they just include often breaking things into some cases where you're dealing with multiplying by a positive number or multiplying by a negative number. And once you've sorted that out, the whole thing is solved. So good luck in your next problems, and I'll see you next time.